17. Can you have that? Say amen, please. All right. If we're waiting on Brother Ben, say amen. All right. Jeremiah chapter number 17 and verse number 8. The Bible reads, For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, that spreadeth out her roots by the river, shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. It says, He shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river. I want to preach to you this morning on this title and this subject, The Danger of Dead Trees. The Danger of Dead Trees. Trees. Brother Leo, would you ask God's blessing, please? Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for service this morning. Now, Lord, we ask you to pass your delegate and give us your word. Bring us forth in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord, open up our hearts and open up our minds to it. In Jesus' precious name, everyone. Amen. 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 Thank you for standing this morning. You could be seated in Jesus' name. We're going to talk about the danger of dead trees. How many people like trees? Two hands. Yeah. Two hands. I'm on the, yeah. If you don't want trees, you don't have um, to. I like to go to the forest. I love going to Tennessee and going to Cades Cove and driving around the loop in Cades Cove. And I'm not necessarily there to see the trees. I'm there more to see the animals. But it's nice. It's nice to go to a forest area and see trees. I would love personally to be able to go to California and see the giant redwoods that they have in California. I think that would be interesting and, and kind of cool. I've camped in the woods before. I've been to Cook's Forest before and had a little bit of fun in Cook's Forest. Not sure I would actually want to go to this forest, but I have watched documentaries and I kind of enjoy the documentaries on the... Amazon rainforest, believe it or not, those are trees. They're just different kinds of trees. They've got, they don't have squirrels in those trees. They have monkeys that will eat you if you don't, you know. So I probably don't want to go to the Amazon forest, but uh, it's, it's interesting. I like it. I, I particularly don't like trees in my yard. I'm just being honest. I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't like trees in my yard. I, I hate to rake leaves. I, I, I don't like raking leaves. I feel guilty sometimes because I have the, the big giant tree in my front yard and the neighbor doesn't have a tree in his yard. So when he has leaves on his yard, I almost feel like I should go and rake his leaves because they're not really his leaves. They're my leaves. But what I really want to do is just get the blower out. <laughs> then I feel like I'm not a Christian if I do that. So, I, I, I don't hate trees. I just, I don't, I don't want to rake leaves. I don't want to clean the leaves out of my gutter. I don't want to pick up twigs and branches after there's been a thunderstorm and you got to go out and pick all the leaves and the branches. And I, don't, I hate cleaning the debris out of my pool in the summer that falls from the trees. And so sometimes I just don't like trees. However, as much as I sometimes don't like trees, trees are vitally important to our everyday lives. They provide oxygen. They improve air quality. They conserve water. They preserve soil. They support wildlife. And, of course, they provide much food and I like to eat. So I kind of, you know, I don't like trees and then I like them and then I don't. I'm just back and forth. And the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. I don't know if I should like a tree or not. But I like apples and oranges and pears and pineapples and cherry and peaches and everything that comes from a tree. I, I like that. So here's some, here's some stats. You know me. I'm a, I'm a stat guy. Forests cover about 30% of the world's land area right now. But they are disappearing at an alarming rate. I just want you to think, put on your spiritual thinking cap right now. Trees are disappearing at an alarming rate. And if you 
can think spiritually right now, you know what Pastor's talking about. Between 1990 and 2016, the world lost 502,000 square miles of forest, an area larger than South Africa. Since humans started cutting down forest, 46% of trees have been felled, according to a 2015 study in the Journal of Nature. About 17% of the Amazon rainforest has been destroyed over the past 50 years, and losses recently have been on a sharp increase. Trees are <laughs> disappearing at an alarming rate. No, Trees need two main things to survive. Not the only thing, but two main things that a tree needs to survive is good soil and water. A tree can't grow in the air. It has to have good soil, regardless of what type of tree it is, and it has to have an ample amount of water. Those are not the only things, but those are the two main things that a tree needs to survive. Poor soil will kill a tree faster than anything else. It's all going to come around, I promise. Poor soil will kill a tree faster than anything else. And lack of water is not far behind. In my research, I found that some trees use as much as 150 gallons of water a day. Can you imagine if your job was to water the tree that needed 150 gallons of water every day? That's a lot of water, but it's showing the point that trees need an ample amount of water. Now, before you think you're in Forest 101 this morning and all you're going to learn about is how to grow and plant a tree, trees are mentioned more than any other living thing besides God himself in the Bible. There is a tree on the first page of the Bible. If you read in Genesis 1, there's a tree. And if you go all the way to the end of the Bible, the last page of the Bible, in the book of Revelations, guess what's on the last page of the Bible? There's a tree there, too. Noah received an olive branch while he was on the ark. Abraham sat under the oak trees, the Bible says. Moses stood at the burning bush. Joseph was simply called a tree. Zacchaeus climbed up a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus. The disciples gathered with Jesus in an olive grove. Guess what the Mount of Olives meant? There were olive trees all around, and that's where they met most of the time. And of all the ways that Jesus Christ could have died, he died on a tree. The Bible likens us as human beings, as men and women, likens us to trees more than any other object that it likens us to. We always hear the Lord is our shepherd and that we are the sheep of his fold. But more than the Bible likens us to the sheep of a shepherd, it likens us to a tree. More than anything else in scripture that you will find where the Bible is using a comparison of a human being to an inanimate object, it compares you and I to a tree. We are supposed to be fruitful trees. We are supposed to be strong trees. We are supposed to be, according to the Bible, trees planted by the water that cannot be moved. We are supposed to be unmovable trees. But I have recently learned that there is a real danger in dead trees. I, I, I recently took a a job working a little bit with the city of Niles and they've got me in the tree department. So every day, go out with the tree guys. Not every day, but most of the days, I go out with the tree guys. We gotta go out and trim trees and cut trees and chip up trees. And I, I kid you not, I could show you the note in my phone. When I tell you, I don't know if y'all think
think I just say stuff just to say it. When I tell you, if you keep your ears tuned to heaven, God will talk to you all the time. All the time. Now, when you pray, that's you communication with God. I told you that. And, you know, when you're in church and when you're in your study and when you're in your prayer closet, no, God can talk to you while you're cutting down a tree. I keep my phone in my pocket and I pull it out because I got all these notes on here. And a lot of times when I get a message, it comes from a, a thought, Brother Cluster, that God gives me sometimes in the most awkward of moments. And I wrote it right down here. The boss is looking at me like, what is he doing? I'm like, just give me... 10 seconds, I got to go over here and jot something down. And I put it in my notes that uh, that just went away on me because it thinks I'm going to want to write a new note. No, I don't want to do that. I want my old note. That's why. <laughs> That's why my dad would say, you don't need them phones. You need a pen and paper. My note just went away. The note said, dead trees are dangerous. Most of the time when we're taking care of a tree, <laughs> Brother Dave, when we're taking care of a tree, a dead tree, this is all going to be spiritual if you let me, a dead tree does two things quite frequently. A dead tree will fall on your fence. Won't it, Brother Tom? We got a tree out here that fell on the fence. A dead tree will fall on your fence, and a dead tree will fall on your power lines. Which is why what our job is most of the time, if I go out with the tree crew, is to make sure that the dead tree doesn't fall on the power lines. <laughs> so we need to be careful around dead trees. All right, now can you please all flip the page in your mind right now from thinking about the tree that's out here in the backyard and say that God said that we are the trees. So can you help me this morning if you believe that and just say, I am a tree. Just, just say that. I, so, so flip that page in your mind and say, Pastor ain't talking about the tree that makes the leaves go in the gutter anymore or the tree that makes the twigs fall in his pool anymore. No, Pastor's talking about people. You've got to be careful around dead trees because there is a danger in dead trees. Remember the two things that I told you at the beginning. Why does Pastor always do all this stuff at the beginning of the message? Because you tie it in. I get your mind in a place. I get, I get your attention at the beginning. Every time I'm talking about something that's not in the Bible, I'm like, oh, wow, I never thought of that before. And then you tie it in with the Bible. What's the two things that kill a tree most often? The soil and lack of water. How important is the soil? The Bible says... He spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. He sowed, and some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell in stony places where they had not much earth. They didn't have enough soil. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no Root, somebody say root. Because they had no root, they withered away. What is, I gotta stop there for a second. The Bible says that the seed went in the soil, but there wasn't enough soil there so that the root couldn't go down far enough. And as soon as the sun came up, it scorched the tree and it died because it had no root. You need to make sure. You need to be 100 percent sure. You Some fell among thorns, and when the thorns sprung up, it choked them, and it choked out a tree, but others fell on good ground, brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty, and then he says, he who hath ears to hear, let him hear. We better make sure our soil is good. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 17 said, this really got me, I've read this scripture a hundred times. So I read it again this week to put it in my notes. And I, really, all, all of the things.
things we need to be grounded in, right? You've heard that term before in the church, need to be grounded. Yeah, right. Need to be rooted and grounded, right? Amen. It's the most important thing for us to be rooted and grounded in. Ephesians 3 and 17 says that Christ made the well in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded. He don't have the scripture on purpose. Being rooted and grounded in love. Well, the Bible's a two-edged sword. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit. I'm gonna talk about some people are gonna get mad. Hey, brother Cluster, you get a lot of people that'll run around with the truth, yeah. and they'll stab you with the truth, and they'll kill you with, because I got the truth, and I'm rooted and grounded so deep in the truth, brother Daryl. Nobody can ever change my mind because I'm rooted and grounded in the truth. You need to be rooted and grounded in love yeah. before you're worried about poking somebody. Yeah. 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 Good soil. Where a tree can grow properly has been rooted and grounded in love first. That should be. That should be. Oh, make the shout first. But it's not because a lot of times we're not rooted and grounded in love first. We all love the Bible study on Wednesday night. Because we're anticipating the pastor's finally going to give it to them. Pastor's finally going to tell them like it is. We're not rooted and grounded in love. And that's why trees are dying at an alarm. to you. 
and you think it's just because I got a microphone in my hand and I want you to come and listen to everything I have to say. No, I know the importance of the preached word of God. If you're going to make it in this thing, if you're going to get to glory, if you're going to have a home in heaven, you're going to have to let a preacher be in your world. You're going to have to let a preacher preach to you. Is your soil good this morning? Is there enough soil there for your roots to go deep? It doesn't happen overnight. Can I say that to the church and the sinner? Can I say it to the church first? It doesn't happen overnight. Let them be rooted and grounded in love first. Because a tree dies the quickest when the soil's not good. I think in my mind those numbers like stagger me. They're not written in the Bible, but when I hear that trees are dying at an alarming rate, I can't help but think of a little sapling. Because you can't have the redwood. You can't have the giant redwood. If it wasn't a sapling first. You can't have the giant oak tree that you want to go take shade under for your Sunday picnic. If it wasn't a sapling first. I read a quote this week. It really kind of made me chuckle a little bit at first. It says that, uh, <laughs> listen, an oak tree doesn't grow overnight. A mushroom does. And most of them are poisonous. You ever come out in your yard like, who in the world planted mushrooms while I was sleeping? Yeah. Right? You ain't never had that. Just wait. Yeah. Well, I thought, like, ha, ha, because I've I, I, I cut the grass. I'm like, well, I don't know. Where the mushroom? I, I don't know. <laughs> mushroom will spring up overnight. Yeah. Most of the time, it's poisonous. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want some spring up overnight gospel. Yeah. I don't want some yeah. spring up overnight relationship with Jesus Christ. But you know what I want? I want to let a sapling grow into a mighty oak. I want to let a sapling grow into a mighty redwood. So we need to make sure the soil is good first. Be weary of a dead tree that tells you you don't need church. You need the church. You need to be in the house of God. You need to let a preacher preach to you. You need to be around brothers and sisters that got your back. You need to be in the presence of God. You need to be in the presence of God. You need to be in the spirit of the Lord. A dead tree will try to tell you you don't need that. The second thing that will kill a tree and it will kill it fast is a lack of water. John chapter 4, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water that you're pulling out of that well right now, they're going to thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I'll give shall never thirst. But the water I shall give him. Got some trees in here with some proper water. He said the water I shall give him shall be in him. Yeah. It says the water isn't coming from an outside source. It says the water comes from an inside source. It says the water that I'll give, it shall be in him. And well of water springing up to be curled up. Aren't you glad you got the water source on the inside? Be careful of a dead tree that tries to tell you you don't need the Holy Ghost. I don't want to uh, offend anyone, but I'm also weary of the danger of a dead tree. A dead tree that don't have the water on the inside. A 
dead tree that don't have the water source on the inside that tells you all you got to do is just be a nice person. All you got to do is listen to some nice Christian music. All you got to do is put the wristband on and say, what would Jesus do? And have that fish sticker on the back of your car. Maybe wear a heart or a cross around your neck. I'm not telling you not to listen to Christian music. And I'm not telling you to put the fish on the back of your car. But if you're going to grow right, if you're going to be a tree that God said is going to be in some tree, Why is it important that Jesus says, the water I give you is going to be in you? Because there's going to be outside sources. They're going to try everything that they can to stop the tree from growing. There's going to be outside sources that are going to try everything that they can to get you to give up. There's going to be outside sources that are going to tell you it's not worth it, so why even try? And when those voices come into your life, you got that well of water on the other side. Because it's real, 
And because it's true, Amen. before I move on to the next thing, let me tell you the story that I heard a preacher tell one time. And he told it to be gospel truth, not something he was making up. He said he had a dream. He had a dream. The dream was this. This was the pastor of a church telling the story. His dream was this. He said, I was the farmer. And I had sheep on my farm. And he said, in my dream, I woke up one morning... And all of the sheep were outside the fence. He said they didn't run away. They did. They didn't run away. They didn't go real far, Brother Zach. They just went right outside the fence. So he said, in my dream, I figured, eh, they didn't run away. They didn't go real far. Maybe the grass is better right outside the fence. So he said, in my dream, I moved the fences. He said, I went to sleep in my dream. And the next morning, I woke up. And once again, all of the sheep were right outside the fence. They didn't run away. They didn't go far. They just went. Oh, I feel God so strong in this house. Yeah. Right they just went yeah. right outside the fence. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, in my dream, I moved the fence again. Yeah. The next morning I woke up and all of my sheep were right outside the fence again. They didn't run away. They were just right outside the fence. He said, so in my dream, I took the fence down. He said the next morning, before I could even wake from my sleep, I heard my neighbors screaming, you need to get out here. And he ran outside of his house and every one of his sheep was dead. And he said the voice of God spoke to me and spoke as plain as I'm talking in this microphone right now. And he said, there is a danger to a fenceless flock. I do not ever want to be a part of a fenceless flock. First thing a dead tree will do is fall on your fence. You don't need to do that. No pastor preaches that, but don't worry about that. Jesus. You don't have to listen to that part. Just do all the boogaloo part. Just do mm, He yeah. shot a boogaloo shot. Uh, do not let the dead tree fall on your fence. Keep your fence up. Keep your fence strong. Because I promise you, a preacher doesn't preach something to try to keep you in. He preaches something to try to keep the enemy. Yeah. 
trying to prevent yet from ever happening. Because if the tree, if the tree falls on the power, if the tree falls on the power lines, then you've got a whole different situation that you've got to take care of. It would be better for you to remove the dead tree than to let the dead tree fall on the power line. Because if you lose the power, you need to watch out, honey. receive power after that the Holy Ghost is I'm glad at the direction God is taking evening light apostolic church I've got an excitement we talk about the world didn't give it the world can't take it away the world can't take away what I feel I'm a little weary about some dead trees a little worried about a dead tree trying to take down the fence. Whoa! That feels yeah. good to say it. Amen. I'm a little bit weary about a dead tree trying to take down the fence. Yeah. And I'm certainly weary yeah. of the dead tree trying to kill the power line. Because yeah. there's something that happens when the power's flowing. Yeah. There's something that happens when the power is moving. Yeah. There's something that happens when the power is moving. Yeah. And you can feel the power. Just, just something. I heard a preacher use the word. I don't use it a lot, but I heard a preacher use the word shift. When you can feel a shift, when you can tell that what used to be the exception is now becoming the norm. When you used to have to go back and check your little notebook and go back and look up on Facebook. Hey, hey, what was that one message Pastor preached back there in September? And you're looking on Facebook trying to find that one message where the power was. That one message where God moved. That one message where somebody went to the altar. That one message where somebody prayed through. But there's something taking place when the power of God it's not the exception, yeah. but now it's the norm. Yeah. Every service when you walk in this yeah. Matter of fact, 
I want to make sure I'm plain in what I'm going to say right now. Do not go out and buy another Bible. Keep, keep your King James Version Bible. Amen. Yeah. It's, the, it's the purest you're going to find yeah. unless you can read a foreign language. But listen, every once in a while when I'm studying, I, I see a verse. I told you I got a thing in there that gives me eight, eight different translations. I don't believe in changing the Word of God at all. But sometimes I think, I wonder what that would say if it was written just in regular words. Because you know sometimes you get these and thous and you know, words that you can't pronounce and words that you can't understand. And that's why everybody goes and grabs a different Bible. Don't do that. Read your King James Version and just pray before you read. And say, Lord, open my ears and my eyes towards heaven. And let me learn what I'm supposed to learn today from your holy word. However, this morning, I got to read something. I, this this grabbed me, Brother Cluster, and made me, made me how to shout in my mind. Why didn't you shout for real? Because I was sitting down. I'm not sitting down right now. I mean, just shout. Because I read a verse, and I'm thinking, man, yeah, the dead tree tries to take down your fence. Uh, they ain't taking down my fence. But the dead tree tries to kill the power. I got the power when I got the Holy Ghost. So I got to make sure the power is still. Mm. Every once in a while the Bible says to stir up that gift that is within you. There is nothing wrong with every once in a while making sure power is still on. Praise God we paid the bill this month. Every once in a while, it's nice to know the power is still on. The dead tree didn't fall on the power line. <laughs> Here's what I found. Romans chapter number 12 and verse number 11. But I'm not reading from the King James. I'm reading from what's called the Passion. It's called the Passion. Here's what it says. Be enthusiastic to serve the Lord. Keeping your passion toward Him boiling hot. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Ghost and let Him fill you with excitement as you serve Him. Man, do not Shame to say I get excited for a lot of stuff. My kids played sports, and guess what? They knew I was there. When my daughter scored a goal, I let everybody know that was my daughter. When Aaron had the pick six at Lakeview, I was doing some kind of dance. It wasn't in the Holy Ghost, but I was letting everybody know my son, who is a defensive lineman, got more touchdowns than the wide receiver does tonight. I'm about to get a little bit happy. And guess what? I got happy because Aaron scored a touchdown. And I got happy because Sissy scored a goal. And I get happy when the Buckeyes win. And I get happy when the Cowboys win. And I get happy when the Dragons win. And God says, all them things are okay. Everything in moderation. Nothing wrong with you going to a football game. But what about the excitement you feel? you and repent later. Amen. Some mamas in here need to say amen. amen. You 
mess with my babies, I'm about to show you, right? So it's not that you're not emotional. It's not that you're not emotional. You're selective with your emotions. You select what you're going to be emotional about. You choose to be quiet in church. You choose to be motionless in church. You choose to do the Mount Rushmore impression in church. And if that's going to be your way of doing it, I ain't going to call you a sinner or a backslider. I'm just going to say, get out of the way. Put, the back, put that verse back up for me, please. Get out of the way for those who choose to be enthusiastic when they serve God. For those who want to keep their passion towards God.
is some trees in here. Fixing the move a little bit. I know what it's like. I know what it's like for somebody to say, what in the world are you all excited about? Have you watched the news? Have you looked at your bank account lately? Have you looked at the gas station prices lately? Yeah, I've looked at something lately. It's called the altar at 1156. Church right now. 